10 days of grueling play, the final table is set for the main event. The November 9 was finally set. Those top nine players all became instant millionaires. Top prize of $8 million, and of course the coveted World Series of Poker bracelet. The term November 9 was an endearing moniker used to describe the final table of the main event at the World Series of Poker. In this video, we delve into the captivating narrative of the WSOP November 9, examining its origins and the factors that ultimately led to its conclusion. Twenty years ago, Chris Moneymaker made a monumental impact on the poker industry by winning the WSOP main event. However, it is often overlooked that during that time, the majority of individuals were unaware of the Tennessee accountant's achievement until a few months later when ESPN started broadcasting their coverage of the main event in July. In the following years, the fascination with the WSOP main event led to an unprecedented surge in the popularity of poker. Each year, a growing number of mainstream platforms began covering the event, while specialized media outlets dedicated to poker emerged to provide real-time updates on the action. The internet underwent advancements, offering fans multiple avenues to stay connected with the ongoing events. Eventually, the poker community became increasingly impatient with the delayed television broadcasts and sought more immediate access to the proceedings. By 2007, the majority of poker players were already aware of Jerry Yang's triumph as the champion of the WSOP main event long before the televised coverage aired in autumn. Concurrently, the initial hints of uncertainty surrounding online poker arose due to the enactment of the UIGEA, which further contributed to the inevitable decline in television ratings. To address this declining television rating, Harris Entertainment devised a unique and somewhat controversial concept for the 2008 WSOP main event called the November 9. While the main event followed its regular format, when the player count dwindled from 10 to 9, the action would pause on July 14th and remain on hold for 117 days. During this interval, the episodes would be produced and broadcasted, allowing fans to witness the progression of the tournament. Then, on November 9th, the final table players would reconvene, resuming play and battling it out until only two players remained. The following evening, the final two players would engage in a heads-up match to determine the recipient of the highly sought-after poker bracelet. Subsequently, production crew tirelessly labored overnight to prepare the show for broadcasting within a mere one-day turnaround, ultimately airing on November 11th. The concept of the November 9 was conceived by Ty Stewart, the executive director of the WSOP. Ty envisioned a scenario where the poker community would be left pondering who will emerge as the victor instead of already knowing the outcome. The intention was to generate excitement and anticipation during the hiatus potentially creating nine fresh poker personalities who could engage in interviews and make public appearances over the four-month period. Additionally, this extended break allowed players the opportunity to secure sponsorship deals with both poker-related and non-poker-related companies along the way. Before I continue, please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It takes less than a second, costs you nothing, and keeps me motivated to make more videos. The introduction of the November 9 concept elicited a mixed response initially, with some expressing concerns about its potential impact on the integrity of the game, while others believe it could enhance the interest in poker. Despite the divergent opinions, the plan was implemented. The 2008 WSOP main event commenced on Thursday, July 3rd, attracting a field of 6,000 844 players, all united by a common goal to secure a spot at the final table. The immense pressure to make the inaugural November 9 was so intense that some players admitted they did not play optimally due to the stress. Dennis Phillips recalled that it had been a very, very intense experience and that the dynamics of the game were drastically altered by the introduction of the November 9. Despite being fully aware of the planned delay, the majority of the November 9 expressed their disappointment at having to pause the tournament, particularly
Lee, eventual champion Peter Eastgate. Eastgate shared his feelings of frustration regarding the prolonged waiting period. He mentioned that waiting for the final result was aggravating as it would have made a significant impact on one's life. However, there were few players who welcomed the break and one of them was Ivan Demidov, the runner-up finisher. Demidov recalled how exhaustion had taken hold of the finalists when they reached the final table. Playing relentlessly for 10 consecutive days without any respite had left him completely worn out and the need for a break was undeniable. During the 117-day break, players faced a unique challenge regarding how to approach their strategy preparations as no one had ever encountered such a situation before. Chino Reem, who finished in 7th place, had the advantage of being able to discuss hands and strategies with close friends and fellow poker pros Michael Mizraki and Nam Lee. Yelon Schwartz, who secured 4th place, also had the opportunity to engage in similar discussion with his backer, Cliff Josephy. Additionally, amateur player Daru Suharto opted to simulate scenarios and strategize with poker professional Eric Lynch. Several players certainly observed that their opponents had made adjustments and altered their playing style during the break-in gameplay. After a prolonged anticipation, the players were completely prepared to continue the game. A new twist in the implementation of the November 9 was the relocation of the event to the Penn & Teller Theatre at the Rio, allowing for a significantly larger audience. With such a huge capacity inside of the theatre, each player also had the chance to bring along a cheering section. Eastgate and Demidov managed to outlast the remaining seven players and advanced to the second night of play for their one-on-one -on -one showdown. In the end, Peter Eastgate emerged victorious over Demidov, securing the title and a prize money of $9.15 million. Ultimately, the November 9 concept achieved its intended goal as the television ratings on ESPN saw a remarkable surge of nearly 50% compared to the previous year. This trend continued in 2009 with an additional 16% increase resulting in an impressive overall viewership growth of 69% from 2007 to 2009. Despite the demanding timeline it imposed on the production team, the substantial surge in the television ratings made all the exhaustive efforts worthwhile. The introduction of the November 9 marked a significant milestone in the quest for more timely poker coverage and revolutionized the perception of televised poker in the present day. With the advancement of technology and the influence of social media in fueling the demand for live poker, ESPN eventually started broadcasting same-day coverage and a 30-minute delay in 2011. This change brought about a considerable transformation during the latter half of the November 9 era, creating a dynamic in which players could learn about their opponent's cards in crucial hands shortly after they were played. Nevertheless, the November 9 also faced criticism as some critics pointed out certain drawbacks or negative aspects associated with the concept. One notable criticism of the November 9 was that it hindered the momentum between the initial days of the WSOP main event and the final table. The final table appeared to be disconnected from the rest of the tournament, almost resembling two separate events. Since the players had already secured substantial payouts and had the potential to win even more, most of the November 9ers hired top-notch coaches and meticulously studied footage of their opponents. Consequently, the final table showcased an exceptionally high level of poker with minimal mistakes or unconventional plays. No one was fatigued or prone to tilt as each participant approached the final table with a clear and focused mindset. However, this posed a significant disadvantage for the skilled players, particularly those who had received extensive television exposure that their opponents could analyze. Additionally, any amateur player who made a deep run had the opportunity to bridge the skill gap during the hiatus and address weaknesses in their game. While non-stop high-level play may appeal to a small percentage of dedicated poker enthusiasts, most viewers are drawn to players like Queen Wen and Jamie Gold characterized by their aggressive style, unconventional bet sizes and daring bluffs. Such excitement is more likely when players are mentally strained after an intense 10-day poker marathon leading up to the final table where the weight of the situation and the potential prize money hasn't fully sunk in. 
With the absence of online poker in the United States since mid-2011, a major catalyst for sponsorships of the November 9 lost its momentum. Consequently, in 2017, Caesars and ESPN made the decision to completely abandon the concept of the November 9. That year, Poker Central made an announcement regarding a television and digital media rights agreement with the WSOP and ESPN. As a result, the final table was reintegrated into the later stages of the tournament, aligning with the rest of the event, and the November 9 was ended. As one would expect from such news, the biggest names in the game had plenty of thoughts regarding this announcement, including the likes of Poker Hall of Famers like Mike Sexton, Phil Hellmuth, and Daniel Negrano. In retrospect, the November 9 will forever hold a significant place in the annals of poker history. The initial nine players who participated in the 2008 WSOP main event created a truly extraordinary and memorable moment. Each of them share a unique bond with one another, forming a special connection that will endure over time.